So the Oppenheimer movie is finally out. And given that, here's a snippet of conversation I had recently with a real-life modern-day nuclear war expert about the lessons we can learn from Oppenheimer's story, and specifically how these lessons apply to these new technologies that we're building, things like artificial intelligence and synthetic biology, which, just like splitting the atom, could be used for incredible good, but also unimaginable evil. Here's what he had to say. What lessons can we draw from the nuclear situation that we could apply to these new dilemmas? I think it's challenging because AI and biotechnology are these really powerful multiple use technologies. They're kind of general purpose in many ways. Mm. Whereas nuclear weapons were born out of a military program. They were controlled by states from the start. AI was born from the private sector. So it's a national regulatory problem. It's an international regulatory problem. And the landscape is moving so quickly that there are very few people right now who are on the frontier and understand what's possible and what would you actually limit, monitor, and regulate if you wanted to do that. There are also real benefits to moving forward quickly and deploying AI in all kinds of different use cases. So there's going to be a lot of pushback against any attempts to limit this technology. Right, like how do we manage that tension between the, between the, the peaceful, wonderful uses and managing the risk? Yeah, we're kind of in 1939 with AI. There has been no Hiroshima. There's been no Nagasaki. We haven't seen how devastating this technology can be. Instead, you have a group of scientists who are speculating based on being highly informed about physics to understand, I can see where this technology can go. And we ought to be doing something now to prevent it from going everywhere and having these really negative consequences. But the rest of the world has not yet acknowledged these harms. And I think you can see that. There was a hearing in the Senate. You could see a lot of senators were having a hard time wrapping their heads around the implications of this powerful technology that we're bringing into the world. So if we look at the nuclear era and think about what we might learn, I think one lesson is that developing and listening to highly skilled technical people is key because you've got to be monitoring and tracking the right things or you're going to miss out. Mm -hmm. You're not going to build an effective system. Second, you got to start somewhere. And as we saw with the, the, the birth of the IAEA and the NPT, when these things first started, they were weak, they were incomplete. A critic okay. or a skeptic would look at it and say, this doesn't do anything. And in fact, even after the NPT, there were a couple prominent failures. You know, just mm -hmm. a couple of years later, India tested what it called a peaceful nuclear explosion. And a lot of people at that point said, the game is up. This thing doesn't work. The NPT is a failure. 50 years later, we have only nine nuclear weapon states. And in fact, the vast majority of countries in the world, the overwhelming world's population, has said, we don't need these mm -hmm. weapons They've for our out. security. Yeah. They have stated that this is not part of their national identity. It's not irrevocable. It's possible they could go back and decide at some point to build nuclear weapons, but it would create so much friction and opposition to do that. And then, of course, there's the issue of having a, or an insufficient agreement in that it might create a sense of false security. Exactly. So how to mitigate that? I think it's challenging. Something like AI, we don't know whether there will be advanced signs that things are going wrong because these systems are inherently hard to interpret. At least the current cutting edge systems that people Right, we don't know what, they're like black they're, boxes. They're relatively yeah. opaque. Yeah. So you could easily come to a false sense of security. I think if you're really attentive, you can probably pick up on warning signs. Mm. I think as well in the biosecurity space, if you're attentive, you can pick up on warning signs and you can devise a system that's going to provide that kind of early warning. But it's a really challenging problem. <music> <music>